What day is today? It's, uh, it's 22 of uh, Cheshvan, Tavshin Pei, and we're studying uh, the book of Shmuel, Aleph, uh, chapter 16, verse 6. Um, we're in the beginning of the uh, uh, story of how a new king was uh, selected, elected, uh, anointed by Shmuel. Um, Shaul... Uh, uh, did not uh, did not fulfill the promise, and uh, was uh, rendered uh, unfit at that point by God. Um, so uh, Shmuel was uh, summoned to to go uh, to the house of Ishai in Bethlehem, um, and um, and f- he says that uh, and and God told him, and there I'll tell you what to do. So that's where we that's where we left off. So they came, uh, he came there, he brought a, uh, a, a, a calf with him, to uh, a, a lamb to uh, sacrifice, and he arranged, uh, and in those days, uh, in order to eat meat, really, they, they would sacrifice shlamim, korban shlamim, and they would uh, do it in a, in a big ceremony, and uh, the important people would sit on the podium, and that's what he did. He, he arranged for all of the elders of the town and uh, the family of Ishai to uh, prepare themselves to, to go to the mikveh, I guess, and uh, be ready for, uh, for, for, for a meal that he would conduct with that uh, lamb. So as they gathered, as they assembled, uh, and he's talking more specifically about the family of Ishai, Ishai and his sons, so he saw the eldest, uh, the oldest son, his name was Eliav, and he declared, um, and it's a, a, a sentence that can be explained both ways, which we will will go with two, two different explanations. Neged um, it's, it's against uh, against God. Uh, Against God uh, to, to be the the, uh, the chosen one. That, that's a very weird way of saying it. So there are two um, two lines of understanding of what is he talking about here. According to Rashi, he said in his heart, he said, um, "Yes, this guy is fit." Eliab, when he saw Eliab, this guy is fit to be a king. That's what the uh, that's what he declared. Um, and the Malbim says differently. He saw him, but he saw that he's tall. He remembered from the time of Shaul. Shaul was tall, right? That he's not more um, commanding more respect than Shaul. And he did not hear in his ear that God says, yeah, that's the man. When, when he came to Shaul, God told him, Shaul, this is the guy. And he promised, God promised Shmuel now that he will do the same. Go, go to, to the house of Ishai and I'll tell you. And he's standing in front of this tall, handsome dude and he doesn't hear anything. So I said, ah, maybe there is still hope for, for, for Shaul. Maybe we did not find yet the person, even though it's seemingly standing in front of me, and maybe Shaul will be saved because it was to, he really wanted Shaul to remain. I mean, that's, nobody wanted to remove a, a king. It, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, not, uh, he, he's, he put him up, you know. He, he uh, arranged for him to be a king. So it's either that he, in his heart he says, aha, that's the guy, or oh, in his heart he says, God is not telling me, this is, uh, maybe it's not. So how would you explain the words to the not theory? Um, I, I see the first approach. Uh-huh. Where do these words suggest the second approach? Neged Hashem Eshicho, that um, this guy is not the right person to replace the current Mashiach of God. So, so Nega doesn't mean before Hashem. Right, it means, it means opposite. 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 It means opposite, right. 
Um, now, why this whole, uh, the next sentence is, is, is a bit of a, uh, a little bit of a punishment for Shaul, for Shmuel. Shmuel, if, if we go back to the time that he met Shaul and made him a king, um, Shaul was, as, you, as we recall, was wandering around looking for the, uh, for the donkeys that he lost, right? And then his helper was convincing him to go ask the man of God who was called the seer, Haro'eh. And so he didn't, they didn't, you know, they didn't have uh, uh, any um, printed media, so they couldn't know what the person looked like unless they knew him. So when, when someone goes to a, to a place in those days and they're looking for someone, they have to ask, where is such and such? Where is the seer? Where is the roe? Now, they bumped into Shmuel, and Shmuel, instead of um, acting a little bit, uh, uh, not answering, yes, I'm the seer, which is what, what he ended up saying, you know, you're the seer, you know, you should, you should uh, be a little, you know. And that level was required of him a little bit more humility. He should have said, maybe avoid the question, not answer it directly, or should ask them, you know, like every good Jew asks uh, with a question, uh, what do you need him for, you know. But so <laughs> he said, I'm the seer. So uh, God sort of said, you know, you're the seer. I'll show you next time you're not going to see that it's not that simple. You, you know, it's, it's all, uh, you see because I made you see, not because you're the seer. Um, so, so God right away when he looks at Eliha, Eliav, the oldest uh, brother of, of David, don't look at, his, uh, at his, the way he looks, and, and uh, the fact that he is a tall person, that he is uh, his stature, because I really am disgusted with him, I don't like him. Now, this is the key word uh, to tell us who he was talking about, okay? According to the second opinion that he was talking about uh, Shaul, that, that Shmuel was thinking maybe Shaul still have a chance, he said, I'm disgusted with him. This is the same exact word that was used before about Shaul, that God is disgusted with him. So he's mentioning the word here, to tell us that he is talking about Shaul. Now, according to the first opinion that we said that he is actually talking about Elihav, about the, this, the guy that uh, Shmuel saw, he says, no, this is not the guy. I'm disgusted with him. It's a little difficult to understand why is he saying disgust. Suddenly God is, is disgusted with a whole bunch of people. I mean, what did he do, Elihav? He just lived. <laughs> he doesn't say that he did anything here. Why is God is disgusted with him? Even though it seems like he's talking about him, um, but I will, will, I'll, I'll explain in a second an, an idea that I heard what was wrong with Eliab. With Eliab. Kilo, it just continues with Shmuel, Kilo adam, ki adam, because um, I don't have the same uh, way of looking at people. A person sees what they see with their eyes. But God can see in the heart. Now, the question is, what was so wrong with Eliav? It's the first time that he's showing up here in, in Tanakh. So what was wrong with him? So we will see later in a couple of chapters down the road that he, is, um, he has an anger management issue. He's, he's becoming very, very upset with David. When David shows up, to the war um, to, to bring stuff to his brothers. What happened is the, 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 brother, the, the brothers of, of David, the older brothers, were participating as, as uh, generals or leaders in the war against the Philistines with Saul, against Goliath, right? And David, as we will see soon, was left at home to take care of the cattle of the of the uh, of the sheep, and uh, his father wanted to send some I don't know some goodies for the for the soldiers. 
So he asked his son to go down to where the battle is and bring them the cake, mommy's cake, you know? He left a guard. David left a guard uh, to guard the, the, the sheep um, and went down to, to, to bring the stuff. Eliav was very upset that he shows up. Why did you leave the sheep, uh, you know, like that, uh, to scatter? You have a duty to. He told him that I, I left the guard, but he was upset with him anyway. He was quick to anger. So, um, now, the, the point is that he's, he was not angry now. That's happening like a few months later. So why is he still, why is he being faulted now? And, and because... That was his nature. That was his nature. Exactly. That was his, that was his nature. And in, in terms of being a king, you need to know how to stay cool, you know? You know, when you lead a nation, you can't just uh, tweet whatever you want, whenever you want. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, excellent. So, so um, anyway, the point is that he was not the man. Then Vaikrai Shai Avinadav, so Ishai summoned the next kid, the next child in line, Avinadav, and he made him pass in front of Shmuel. And uh, that's not the guy either. The next one. Shama is the third kid. And so on and so forth. So he passed all the seven kids in front of Shmuel. And Shmuel tells, rendered the, uh, the decision right on the spot in, uh, to, to Ishai and said God did not uh, choose any of those. Now, why did he mention... Why is he able to make those decisions but for Eliyav, Hashem had to tell him that. No, it, it, it's all the same. Hashem, Hashem, Hashem didn't say a word to him. So, because he told, Hashem told him, I will tell you when you, when, when you see it, you will know. So they pass by and it's quiet, nothing is happening. The same way happened to the three kids. The question that I, that I, I heard asked is being asked, why is he mentioning three names? What about the other four? Why doesn't he mention the other four? So uh, some explain that those three sort of made it to the playoffs. <laughs> they had the possibility of being, they had qualities that you can think might fit a king. The other kids were younger, well, they, they, didn't, they didn't make the cut, so they, they, they're not mentioned. Um, but these, um, you, you would think that they, they, they can, but they didn't. Okay, so they're standing over there with the seven sons, and it's none of those, uh, none of those people. And so Shmuel knows that something is wrong here, because... God told him to go to the house of Ishai to choose one of his sons. It's got to be one of them. It's got to be one of them, and it's not one of them. So what's going on? Did you run out of kids? <laughs> what's up, dude? You know? Something is wrong here. So Ishai says, yeah. There is one remnant one. There is one, you know, the, the remainder. After you do the division, you know, they have a remainder. It doesn't fit into any box. That one is, is left. And he's out in the, in the field. We didn't even bring him in. So Shmuel asks, and tells Ishai, listen, you better send and bring him here. Because we're not going to eat. I'm going to make a scene. <laughs> we're not going to eat. And the whole town is here waiting, right? I'm not going to eat until he's coming now. And this is where we have a very, very interesting story. What was happening with David? Why was David ignored? Why was David not, not there to begin with? If, if Shmuel is telling David, uh, Ishai, bring all of your children, how come he didn't bring David? What? Yeah, but come on, you have other options, you know? 
can get a uh, fire, you know. Uh, yeah, you can just get an uh, Uber or something to watch the. So this is a story. It's a very interesting and painful story. It starts 200 years earlier. 200 years earlier, we had the story of Ruth, which is the great-great-grandmother of, of David. And in those days, um, th there was the, the law is that there are two nations, Moabites and Ammonites, that the men cannot convert, but the women can, which is a very, very odd and strange exception that doesn't exist in any other nation. Any other nation, it's either men and women can or men and women cannot. The Amalekites, you know, some say nobody can. And the, the, the Egyptians, nobody can. And, but, uh, but here you have, uh, and most other nations, both men and women can convert. But here you have a special situation. Now, they were neighbors, and in those days, you had ups, ups and downs, and some years the Jews were really strong, some years not. But when the, when the, the Jewish people were ruling and they were really strong in the, in, in the land, a lot of people would convert, people would come in. And it was always odd where, you know, people from Oklahoma, only the men are, allowed, are not allowed, but the women are allowed. It's strange, you know? So, and people struggled with it. And the, the way people felt is that either it's all or none. And since the man cannot be converted because it says clearly in the Torah, lo yavo amoni, lo yavo moavi bikal Hashem, so the women also are not. That was the common uh, perception. The perception and the feeling and the way people act. Comes Boaz and Ruth, right? And he converts Ruth. Um, and Ruth is a Moabite, and he's uh, setting in stone the uh, halacha that, she, that uh, a Moabite, uh, a female Moabite, is allowed to convert. 200 years passes by, and the controversy is not settled. The steel, it's still brewing, and it's, the people are still talking, and it's still not settled. They didn't believe the book of Ruth? They just, the book of Ruth uh, at that time. That was for that purpose. Who wrote the book of Ruth? <coughs> Shmuel. <laughs> Shmuel is just living now. For 200 years, it wasn't there. So, and he wrote it because of David. So to legitimize David, right? Anyway, so it was a problem. Ishai is the son, great-grandson of Ruth. So he thinks to himself, all of my children, you know, might not be legitimate uh, Jews. And he really couldn't take, uh, couldn't, he was a pious person, he was one of the, 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 the great people, he died because people need to die, not because he did anything wrong. And uh, he, he felt terrible that he's not going to have, uh, he's not part of the Jewish people or might not be a part of the Jewish people. Later on, we will see that one of the advisors of Saul is, um, when, when Saul is worried about David and saying, you see, this guy can, can fit to be a king. So Doega Adumi says, hey, you worried about him being a king? Worry about him being a Jew. He's not, he's not even a Jew. Forget about being the, 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 the king of the Jews. You know, don't worry about it. But, it. but it was the same thing with his brothers and his father, too, right? So, exactly. So his father, Ishai, was worried about it. And what happened? There is a way to, for someone who is not legitimate to have a legitimate child. A mamzer which is loosely translated in English as a bastard, you know, but is, it's someone who is illegitimate from a, if a brother married a sister. Yeah, forbidden, forbidden marriage. A brother married a sister or, you know, some instance of this kind of a relationship. Um, so the, 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 the pro product of that, the, the, the kid, is, is a mamzer. And mamzer in Jewish law, can never join 
married a, a regular Jew, even a even hundred generations. So what happened for, for this kind of thing? So there is a way, there is a way to, to, um, to purify the, the race. How so? There is a special law that allows a master to marry off or marry himself his Canaanite slave. As a woman slave at home, a Canaanite, he marries her. They have a child. While, and and, and the, the children are born while she is still a slave. So the children are not considered his children. Then when he releases her and them, they automatically are, are, are obligated to convert. That's the process of having, in order to have a, a non-Jewish slave, they, when the, the, the rule is that in order for them to, to be released, they must convert to Judaism. When they convert to Judaism, you know, the DNA is his DNA, but they're not considered his children. Nowadays, also, there is a way to, to, um, for someone who is illegitimate to have children that are legitimate, and that is having a relationship with a, with a non-Jewish woman, and then have them convert. After the fact. After the fact. Because when, when, a, when a convert is convert, converts to Judaism, they don't have, it's like a, a, a newborn baby that doesn't have parents. They, they're not related to, to the father or the mother, for that matter. So, so that's a way to purify someone who is not legitimate. Ishai feels, Ishai feels that he is not legitimate, might, may be not legitimate. And he has those seven beautiful sons, and they might, be not, might not be legitimate either. So he stops having a relationship with his wife. He, he just can't take this. After the seven kids. After the seven kids. He has a woman slave. And he calls her and says, I want to have a relationship with you. It doesn't explain to her all the halachic uh, reasoning and stuff. She might have not be able to, to know it or whatever, to understand it. But tells her, prepare yourself for tonight. Don't say a word to my wife. Don't say a word to anybody. You know, just prepare yourself tonight. We're going to have a relationship. So she had loyalty to her master, to the, to the wife of Ishai. And tells, come run, run tells her what's going on, uh, you know, what's, what's happening here. And they agree between themselves that the wife of Ishai is going to sub <laughs> that night. Now, he is not having a relationship with her for a while, for three years or so. So it's all new for him now. And in those days, you didn't have uh, electricity. So it was all done in total darkness. So it was easier. That's what happened with the, uh, Leah and Rachel, right? So the same thing would happen here, but the slave woman um, you know, made the, the, the wife of Ishai swear to not say a word to anyone. Okay, they make the switch. Now, she doesn't know the whole story that it's being done for, to purify the race, to have a child which will be the only Jew in town, the only, the only Jew in the family. The wife becomes pregnant. And Ishai is wondering, I did not have a relationship with this woman for three years. How in the world is she getting pregnant? So rumor starts around. But Ishai is a very important man, a, a very uh, upstanding citizen, you know, the, 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 the rabbi of the town. So they sweep it under the rug. They're not saying a word to anybody. Now the family knows. The kids know. The, the, the sons. They all know that this something is wrong here that it's sort of impossible that she be, said that that it's their brother from the father um, 
And she, sw- the, the, the wife who was pregnant, swore not to say a word. So she's not saying a word. The child is David. That's David the Melech. And he is being treated like an illegitimate child. He is being treated as a guy that, you know, the wife was sleeping with someone. And, and, and so he's being sent outside. He never, he never joined the family dinner. He never ate with them together. He was sent to be out with the, with the sheep, with the cattle. Usually people would have um, helpers, slaves, whatever, wor- working with the cattle. Here he sent this, the, the youngest son, hoping that something will happen, that the lion will attack the flock and will take, get rid of the son. So, and he also somehow was a redhead where everybody else was not. Aha! That's why, because it's not, what? Because, yeah, it's the mailman, exactly. So, um, so when, when he, he got an order to bring all of his sons, that's not my son. So that's why he didn't bring him. He didn't think it's his son. Um, Sitter. Um, if you can, oh, we got a few. Yeah, you got it. Thank you. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So. But before you continue. Yeah. Shmuel is the author of Megillah Root. Of course. And Megillah Root, the last uh, couple of verses, gives you a whole lineage. Of course. Leading to Yishai. Right. So, could Shmuel relate to Yishai? Here you have... It's coming. It's a coming. It's a coming. It's, it's, that's what happens now. So, Vaishlach Vayavieu. So he sends uh, someone, a messenger, and bring the kid, Vuad Muni, and he's a redhead. Vu Yefe Naim Vetov Roi. He's very handsome and he's very, um, very good looking and he has a good eye, you know, he has a good heart. Yefe uh, Naim means a, a very good heart, which is a sign for a good person, a good uh, person who fits uh, a, a, a position of authority. Because if someone is a jerk, you know, you don't want to put him in a position of authority. And Admoni, though, is also uh, signaling that the person has um, uh, a hot blood. And Asaph, exactly. So they all thought that now, oh, we're going to have Asaph 2.0. You know? Now... When someone is a redhead, but not not necessarily redhead with the with the it's also the the, the hair, but it's in, in it's in the uh, nature in in the in the, the attributes of the person. The, it's it signals that the person can be a a a, a murderer or a mohel or a shochet or a general who is. Uh, saving the Jewish people by, you know, by killing the enemies. It has to do with blood. It has to do with spilling blood. You know, that's the that's the nature. If you look at the, uh, that's the nature in astrology. That's the nature of the person. So he was at Muni. He he really was had a lot of blood on, on his hands because he was uh, fighting off all of the enemies of the Jewish people at the time. And as soon as uh, this redhead shows up, God says, uh, and, and, uh, he, he pushes Shmuel, who on his own didn't, didn't know all of that and didn't want to, to make him... Uh, he, he, the, the, based on the story, it sounded to him that it's not the right person. Now, what happened is, we are... We are Mentioning this every time we say Hallel. Even Masua Bonim Aitale Rosh Pina, the stone that the builders didn't like, that they, they couldn't find it, they couldn't find it, it was an shaped stone, couldn't find where to put it in the building. So the Masu, they were disgusted with it, they threw it away. Aitale Rosh Pina became the cornerstone, the most important stone of the building. That's David Amelech. And all of the brothers would say, this is from God. We have no idea what's going on here. It's all the wonders of God. 
So that's because of this story, because it was so murky, Shmuel took upon himself to start the whole writing, the whole legitimizing David from several, you know, several generations ago, writing all of the history, writing everything from the time of Ruth to make sure that we all know that David is, is a complete and full and legitimate and there is no question and you know, so that's what, that, this is what was going on here at the time. This whole thing surfaced and it will surface again at the time of David Amelech. And after Shmuel finally wrote this story and the book of Ruth, that's when the problem was settled forever. And Amoni velo Amonit, Moavi velo Moavit, that became a, 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 the, 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 the law of the land and accepted law of the land. When did Jishai know that that was his child through his wife? Now, this is when this is when the news was broken. You know, she swore not to say She swore, but now you have Shmuel. Shmuel didn't swear. Shmuel, you know, that's his. That's your son. So you know, Shmuel did not uh, wasn't involved in the uh, shenanigans up there. So Ruth was a Moabite, and the women could could convert, but but not the men, right? So did he continue to try to have relations with his maidservant so that he would get a legitimate son in his mind? When he saw the disaster happening, I think he gave up, and he also was a Kabbalist, so he knew how many children he's a, he, he's going to have, and he realized that he he knew that he's going to have eight children. And that's the last one, so, you know, it's... But he thought it wasn't his. I don't know. I, 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 he, if, I, I guess at that time, at that point, he was also older, you know, after eight children. He was older, I don't know. I don't think that he wanted to have a... He saw that it didn't work, that the whole scheme didn't work. Uh, anyway, so by Kashmuel at Keren Hashemen, if you recall... He was. Uh, he had uh, a shefa full of oil with him, and uh, at the ready, by Shachoto, he anointed Bekera um, Vechav together with his brothers to tell us that two things happened here. First of all, uh, there are those who say that it was the actual anointment was was done separately. Nobody knew about it, but here it seems that it was in in the presence of his brothers. So the seven brothers and the father and Shmuel, that's nine, and David, that's ten, there was a minion exactly. Okay? So they had exactly a minion, and the word didn't get out. The word didn't get out for, for, many, for few reasons. The brothers didn't exactly like it. You know? So it was in their interest to, to be quiet. They also knew that if, Shmu, if Sh Sha Shaul will hear that they uh, organized the king from their family, the whole family is gone. So it was very quiet and nobody knew about it. But it's lach, and right away, as we saw that what happened to Saul right away, but it's lach, ruach Hashem, el David, mayom From that moment, um, the, the spirit of God um, went in, uh, into David and made him very successful. Mayom um, vamala, and from that point on, Vayakom Shmuel Vayelacharamata and Shmuel saw that that's what happened. That's what was happening. So he folded and uh, finished the meal over there, finished the anointment, and went back home. And uh, get at that point, really, uh, uh, that that's really the the last few months of his life already. Now. What happened is, it's, it seems like it's a zero-sum game, that you have one spirit that goes into one man at a time. You're not going to have multiple kings or multiple people that are, have the spirit of God to lead the Jews at the same time. So if the spirit went into, the, into David, that means that he went out of Shaul. So right away, on the spot, in a different town, not, doesn't understand why Shaul loses it. He loses the spirit of God that went into him. Now what happens when someone has the spirit of God and then the spirit of God goes out? What, what's left? A vacuum. So into that vacuum 
That's where all the nightmares crept in. So, So suddenly what came in is a, is a wind of fear. Is a wind of... of, of uh, um, 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 uh, how do you call st- strong fear of of uh, beata apprehension? No, very paranoid. Paranoid. It became the Depressed. what? The, oh, so uh, the the Malbim is saying that he's mentioning it. It became he, he the, the 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 name of the of the of the illness is melancholy. That's what he writes it in Hebrew. It's very melancholy. Mel- melancholia, that's what he calls it. Um, but it's really the fear um, when someone is, is really in, in total fear, in, in uh, um, how do you say strong fear, no? Dread. Dread. What? No. Right, it was his, well, it was, it, that's, what, that's, that was the result. But anyway, he was walking around upset, he was wor- walking around depressed, he was walking around fearful because he didn't know what came, what came and what lost. Well, he lost something and he, he, didn't, he didn't understand what he's, he's feeling. Now, this is the, the pasuk that from this point on, whenever we see that Saul is, is uh, doing uh, irrational things or things that are not exactly according to Allah, this is why. He, he, he just, something snapped. He was shaky before this. Happened. He was shaky before that, so but was the... he was not shaky. The truth is that he was not shaky. We learned about it last time or the time before that he was really a super guy, and he really knew exactly what he's doing. He just made a slight mistake, but he was not really shaky. He had traits that maybe lend themselves to this kind of thing, but he he wasn't there yet. He wasn't there yet. Now this is only now. After David became a king, he and, and, and took the spirit of God. And um, anyway, so. So he uh, uh, his servants, who are, you know, the people of the palace walking around and see that there's something is wrong with the king. And that he's, uh, he has a bad spirit around, bad aura around him. And uh, he's, um, he's, he's fearful, you know, he's, he's, um, he's paranoid. So they came up with a solution. So um, they, they offering their services and said, we are, please, we are going to help you. We are your servant. Uh, let give us the uh, give us the uh, order to look for a musician. again, Let us look for for a musician who can play a uh, violin. And when you have this uh, uh, depression, this bad feeling, this despair, tormented, tormented. yeah. Um, and so, so uh, the music has, as we all know, has a, a very what? As, as healing powers, and it has the ability to change one's mood, uplift or or that way. You know, if if if, if someone feels uh, happy, they hear a, a sad song. They start crying and vice versa. So the music has the ability to shift the mood of the person. And they knew it, obviously, then. And they said, okay, let's just get a musician who can, uh, let, let, let's get you an iPad, you know? So Shaul says, you know, that's a great idea, but not just a regular musician who can read notes. I want a maestro. I want someone who's really good because he knew inside that his situation is really bad. So he needed more than just a, a regular uh, musician. So one of the helpers, one of the boys, uh, the rabbis are telling us that this is a gentleman by the name of Doega Adomi. He's an Edomite, 
His name is Doeg. He was a very, very smart person, very um, one of the, the main advisors. And he right away felt that there is room here to steer trouble. He had uh, one of those rotten, uh, you know, personalities. And he, he was trying to steer problems. He was trying to see if he can, maybe for his own, uh, uh, I have to research it a little bit for next time. For was, gain. Yeah, for his own gain or for his own, uh, or for, or, or for, for uh, uh, just enjoyment, just like to have popcorn and see how, how the, the place fall apart, falls apart. And he says, I saw that there is a son to Ishai from the house of Bethlehem. And he knew the story, the fact that uh, David was uh, an outcast, was not really part of the family. And he, so he wanted to bring him in and steer trouble with the sons of Shaul. Shaul had the son... Yonatan, and Shaul wanted Yonatan to be the king. And Doeg says, you know what, let's, let's see what I can cook here. So he says, this person knows how to play. So um, says uh, Shaul, my son also knows how to play. He also, Gibor Chayl, also very, uh, a very strong man. And we know from before, uh, Yonatan was also, uh, you know, very, very strong individual. The Ishmael Hamai also was a tactician, a, a, a very good general. We know that Yonatan was also that kind of a person. Unevon Davar, he also understood from one thing, he understood another thing. You know, you didn't have to tell him the whole story. So, he said, so Saul is thinking to himself, my son is also that. But Shaul doesn't say, bring me my son. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. But yeah. this is a discussion amongst the advisors and Saul. So as I said, we'll bring you a musician. And Doeg says, oh, I know a musician. Right. And he's this and that. And so Saul is thinking to himself, actually, my son can be that. Ve'ish Tor, and he's also a very handsome person because someone who is uh, serving in front of the king, you don't want it to be the uh, hunchback of Rotterdam. You know, it needs to be someone uh, nice, right? Vashem, so, so he says, Yonatan is also that. Vashem imo, and God is with that person. And then, this is when Saul says, Ah, with Yonatan, he's not exactly that. He's not, he, he's not demonstrating that halacha is always according to him. Yonatan was a, an, a, an exceptional individual, but he wasn't a guy that was, you know, everything that he says uh, would, uh, would be the halacha. So, then uh, Saul says, okay, that's, uh, let's consider that person. Let's, let's invite him for, for an interview. He's not summoning him right away to, to get the job. He's calling him for an interview. So Shaul is sending a messenger to Ishai. Send me um, your son who is in the, you know, with the cattle, the, the guy that is uh, an outcast, right? So as it's customary in those days, when someone goes to see the king or the important person, they send a gift with the, you know, they bring, they, they can't come empty-handed, empty-handed. So he, he took a, a donkey loaded with a, a loaves of bread, and, and a, a flask of, of, uh, of wine, and he put a, a young uh, lamb, on the on the on the donkey, v'gdi zim echad va'ishlach biad David Moel Shaul. So he sent it uh, with uh, with David with David. He sent to Shaul. Va'avod David al Shaul va'amod lefanav. So David comes and stand in front of Shaul, and Shaul instantly falls in love with the kid. Va'yaveu mod va'ilon osekelim. He really liked him. He liked everything about him. It's all of the the six uh, the the six listed. Uh, um, special uh, attributes of, of David really took him by storm, and uh, uh, he made him his uh, his, uh, his his right 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 hand and man. You know, is he would carry everything that he, wherever he goes, he would carry his his uh, most uh, you know his what his armor bearer. 
it's not just armor. Kelim is not just armor. When he went to the mikveh, he took his towel. When he went, you know, when he went to sleep, he, he brought him his slippers. You know, everything that he had, he brought, he, he, he was with him. Um, the Targum Yonatan is mentioning actually that it was weapons. That Kelim is weapons. That's what you, 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 Kelim Ilchama. That's what the Targum Yonatan says. Um, yes, okay. Um, so then, after he likes him, and so he, he took him for a, you know, a, a trial period. At that moment, he, after the trial period, he says, <laughs> He says, he sends back to his dad, I like the kid, I want him to be, uh, to work here permanently. Um, now, it seems that even after that, he didn't work there permanently. He just worked there a lot of time, but not permanently, because later on we'll see when Shaul goes to war, he's, uh, he's going back to the cattle, you know, to, to take care of the sheep. But anyway, we'll, uh, we'll continue next time, to be continued.